G'day folks, Pete Williams here and back again for day 21 of this year's 30 day challenge. Now I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, AdWords series as much as I am putting it together for you. And in today's session, what I wanna cover is management. How to manage your Google AdWords account to ensure you're getting every last penny and every last click out of this account. So in this first video, I wanna cover a couple of things from a, a theory basis. Just some of the fundamentals again, some of the principles, and a way to think when you're actually doing your AdWords management. So let's jump in quickly and go through a quick slideshow. There's been a lot of questions on the forum over the last couple of days. Uh, for those of you who aren't actively in the 30 Day Challenge forum, we have an amazing community of moderators, veterans, and people who are first timers at the 30 Day Challenge. So I really encourage you to actually get the most out of the community with uh, an active participation in the forums, as well as actually active participation with meetups that I mentioned in the pre-season videos. So what I wanna cover uh, and is answer a couple of the questions that have popped up over the last day or so around quality scores and uh, the first video I put together in this entire AdWords theory back on day 19. So when it comes to landing pages, the question I've seen a couple of times is, how do I know if I have a good landing page from a quality score perspective? Well, it's a pretty simple answer. If your site is already ranking well, naturally for a search term, such as children's sleeping bags, then when you actually do AdWords for the term children's sleeping bags, you're gonna have a good landing page quality score because the algorithm Google uses to rank your site for a particular search phrase is a very similar algorithm to how they determine landing page quality. Uh, it's all about giving the user the best experience. So they wanna give their uh, user, whether they click on AdWords or natural rankings, a good experience. So the algorithm is the same, or very, very similar at least. The second element of the quality score was relevance. So with relevance, you wanna ensure you are giving the user the best experience again. and by split testing your adverts and getting a high click-through rate, what that shows Google is a high click-through rate means good relevance quality score. Because if, rel if your advert you're creating is relevant to the user, they're gonna click on the ad, which is obviously what Google wants. It gives them revenue and it gives the users a good experience. And thirdly, the click-through rate. And how does that all sort of factor in? Now, with all things being equal, if there are only two people bidding in AdWords on any given search term and the landing page quality is the same, the general relevance is the same, and they're actually bidding the same. If there's two both bidding uh, at 50 cents per click for the click rate, that's their maximum click through um, cost they're willing to pay or maximum cost per click they're willing to pay. So if all those things are being equal, but one player has a click-through rate of 8%, and the other player has a click-through rate of, say, 3.5%, the first player with the highest click-through rate is gonna have the lowest cost per click, because obviously the ads they're showing is much more relevant, which is what Google wants to do. So they're gonna reward you with a lower cost per click. So I hope those three points, just reiterated in a slightly different way, clear up any confusion some of you may have. So how does, one come to these sort of um, principles or theories or um, decisions when they're actually playing with a Google AdWords account. There's gonna be a lot of times as you uh, move on and grow your AdWords campaign, you're gonna to come to a fork in the road and go, well, how do I do this? How should I do this? And unfortunately, although Google's help section is very, very helpful, as a help section should be, they don't give a lot away about how their algorithm works and how the um, the, the bid process works. So a lot of it's um, derived by testing and uh, I guess logic. So there's three questions that I always try and answer myself when I'm going through a dilemma of what to do inside my AdWords account. So I wanna run through this um, thought process with you so you can actually apply that yourself moving forward. So if I have a dilemma, the first question I always bring myself back to is what is Google's objective here? What are they trying to achieve with their AdWords program? And as I mentioned already about five or six times in this video, Google's objective is to serve the most relevant adverts possible to ensure the user of their service, the person who's actually searching on Google, has the best experience and find what they want. 
So if we keep that in mind and use that as our foundation whenever we make a decision, you're going to be in good stead. So the next question I ask myself is, how does this situation relate to that objective? So let's take a situation for example. Let's say you want to grow your AdWords campaign by adding in a lot more keywords. So you have a lot more impressions and hopefully get more traffic. So are you helping them achieve the objective by throwing in all these extra keywords into an existing ad group? So if you're just going to dump in an extra 100 keywords in an already existing ad group. So when it comes to the relevant side of things, well, you're not really going to be helping Google achieve their, achieve their objective because what they want to show is relevant ads to relevant keywords. So if you have 100 different keywords in one ad group, but only a very tightly written ad, the chances are you're not going to have relevance to every one of those keywords you're just throwing in there. So you're not helping Google achieve their objective. That's why in the other video yesterday, we went through about creating more ad groups and but still keeping them very, very tightly focused because it's going to help reach Google's objective. And finally, what you want to say is, okay, now given the situation, how that relates to Google's objective, what would they do? Are they going to penalize me for what I'm doing? Or are they going to applaud me and reward me? Is what I'm doing helping them reach their objective or not? And that's exactly how I think, well, what would Google do and how are they going to actually react? Are they going to penalize me or reward me? So that's just the thought process that I use and hopefully it'll give you a bit more clarity of what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing inside Google's AdWords program. And finally in this, in this introduction video for today, I just want to reiterate a couple of things and this is why AdWords at this stage is just a test. Moving on beyond the test and beyond the 30 day challenge and as you grow your new internet based business, uh, I hope a lot of you continue to use AdWords because it's a great way to control traffic levels and, and ensure you are getting traffic to your site. So at this stage as I've mentioned and we've all mentioned quite a few times, we're still testing. All we're trying to do right now is get the 200 visitors to your website so you can see if this niche or niche, depending on where you are in the world, is commercially viable. So. The question comes back to is, well, how much should I spend? Do I need to spend this in AdWords? Uh, and all that sort of stuff. So I want to take a step back for a second and, ask, and answer and discuss a question first. Because all we're doing is testing the, commercially vi the, commercial, sorry, the commercial viability of this niche. So let's take it back. Before the internet and before the 30-day challenge, how, what would it have cost somebody to test a niche's or a business's commercial viability offline in the real world with a retail store? Well, the costs are going to be signing a three months lease minimum, getting signage for that store, um, doing the fit out, having all the stock, and months and months of time negotiating, putting all this together. It's a hell of a lot of money you have to spend before a single person walks into your store to see what you have to offer. Whereas with the 30 day challenge and the internet, what is the cost to test the niche's commercial viability online? Um, in typical Pete Williams fashion and uh, internet marketing fashion, as I said, I've done a misspell here. That last word should be online in this last example. Uh, but the cost here is simply a domain name, a hosting account, which is a few dollars, possibly $100 in AdWords traffic, which we have discussed, and then just 30 days of following the 30-day challenge process. That's it. Not a whole lot of money spent and not a whole lot of time spent either to test the commercial viability of this niche. So this is what we're trying to do right now in this particular section of the 30 day challenge and in the entire 30 day challenge anyway. So uh, hopefully this is sort of giving a bit more clarity, a bit more of a foundation and moving forward I'm going to go into our AdWords campaigns now and do some management. Look at ways we can actually um, ensure we get higher quality scores with negative keywords, uh, managing our bids and our cost per clicks, uh, doing what's referred to as a peel and stick and just give you some basic management concepts as well. So make sure you uh, review the videos, uh, please rate the videos as well, leave your positive comments below if you've enjoyed what we've covered here, and make sure you participate on the 30 Day Challenge forums with any questions you have, because that's where myself, Caro and the other moderators, and even the veterans will be to give you support and answer all your questions. So continue through the journey, thanks a lot for sticking with us so far, um, congratulations, and let's uh, jump into the next video.